I do have an actual flushing toilet. And honestly, I prefer dealing with this than I did with the composting toilet. Here in the bedroom, I have tons of storage, which is awesome because I have four seasons worth of gear. Propane does have a little bit of condensation you have to think about. But I've got close to three feet of space here. I could fit another one or two bikes if I really wanted. I was two years full time in my shuttle bus conversion. Hey guys, my name's Johnny. I live full time in this truck camper with my two dogs, Luna and Willa. Come on, check it out. All right, so here we are in the kitchen. Uh, I have a couple luxuries in here that I didn't have in my bus build. Uh, up here, you'll see I have a microwave. Still don't use it very much. I like to use the stove mostly, but I do have it, which is nice. Here I have a three burner cooktop with oven, which is also very nice. I didn't have an oven in my bus conversion. Uh, I've already used that a number of times just because it, I can't. Up here, I have a lot of storage. Uh, for my pots and pans, my plates, pretty much anything that I need cooking wise. And then this is also another big cabinet for some bigger bowls, my kettle, uh, some other kitchen things like that. And then just two little drawers here. But the nice part is they all have very good holding mechanisms. I didn't have to obviously make any of the holding mechanisms. The manufacturer thinks about that. So it just takes a little bit of a tug and then it's good. I do have a nice large sink, single basin. Over here you'll see my kind of power station of sorts. Um, I can see all my tank monitors from here. I'll flick on some porch lights, my water pump. This is a charge controller that came with the truck camper. It actually only has a 20 watt solar panel up top, but I have upgraded some other electronic things to also get more power on top of that. And then I do have a stereo that has speakers inside and outside, which is really nice, something I didn't have before and kind of makes it nice for when you're hanging outside, you can play a little music or just in here cooking, I can play a little music as well. Obviously you have to think about trash in a tiny space. This was a good spot for me to just have a nice little trash can. There's a little bit more storage back here, but then behind all of this underneath the cabinet is a six gallon hot water heater. And then underneath here is my battery and a lot of my solar components. In addition to that, something else I added uh, to the camper was a diesel heater. So I added that underneath the oven. It does come with a propane furnace, but the propane furnace isn't super efficient. It draws a bit more power than a diesel heater and it's not dry heat like a diesel heater. Propane does have a little bit of condensation you have to think about. And then right above me, I have two really nice features. One is this really big skylight, just lets in a ton of natural light. I pretty much leave it open all the time. And then I also have an AC, which is a luxury I did not have before. I couldn't run it for very long off of my current batteries, but if I'm ever plugged in, uh, I can definitely run my AC and it's a nice luxury to have for sure. And then over here, I do have a slide out pantry. I went ahead and replaced what the manufacturer had put in that pantry. They just had some small wire baskets, which weren't a super efficient use of the space. And there was only three of them. And I just built some super simple wooden troughs, essentially, that just maximizes the space a little bit more. And then also below that, there's just a little bit more shelving just for some canned goods uh, that I use. Here we are in the other half of the kitchen. One thing I made here that the camper didn't have was these little steps. Made these for the dogs just so they can get up into the bed and they just remove. And this was actually already here because there is an additional counter piece that can go here. Whether it's the stairs or that extra counter piece, it just kind of sits in and, and latches in here. Here, there's this big accordion that actually can section off the bedroom. Whether you want to keep heat over here or keep heat in the bedroom, whatever it may be. Built into the wall, I kind of have used this as my spice rack. And then obviously we have a nice big fridge freezer over here. Uh, the fridge will run on propane or 110. It does draw a lot of power if it does run on 110. So I usually only have that when I'm plugged in. I have two 30 pound propane tanks and so it'll run for a really long time. Also have a freezer, just a lot more space than I used to have. And the nice part is they just have a nice locking mechanism. I've spent just over two years living on the road now. I was two years full time in my shuttle bus conversion and then sold that and swapped it out for 
this vehicle and this rig. When I had the bus, it was 32 feet long. And then I also was towing a car behind it for the last year or so that I was in it. So I was about 53 feet long. So the length of a semi trailer. And while I had my ability to separate my home from my vehicle, it was a lot to move around just by myself. It was harder to turn around. It, you had to just be more aware of where you were going, what you were doing. Whereas this, I can still separate my house from my vehicle, but I have it all in one. And while it is a very big vehicle when the camper's on, it's about 28 feet, it's a lot more comfortable to drive. I can set the cruise control and know that it's gonna make it up a hill uh, or you know that it's not gonna be affected by a tiny little hill. I'm able to have all my gear, all my same stuff, all my kitchen stuff that I had before. So while it is a slightly smaller footprint, I have still just as much space as I could ever need. And here we are in the bedroom area. This mattress is a queen mattress. It came with a mattress from the factory, but it was super uncomfortable. So I replaced it with a memory foam mattress and it's great. Here in the bedroom, I have tons of storage, which is awesome because I have four seasons worth of gear and lots of jackets and just everything. So the reason I have so much stuff is I like to do a lot of activities. I mountain bike, I hike, I like to ski. And so within here, I have a ton of shoes, I have jackets, I have two pairs of ski boots, I have gloves, snow pants. So I'm ready to do whatever I want when the opportunity arises. So over here in the front, I have a hanging wardrobe. That's basically all my jackets, sweatshirts, stuff like that. And then even below that, there's some storage for gear. Uh, I have some camera stuff in there. On each side, there's these little cubbies. And in there I've put uh, basically collapsible square boxes. That's where I keep all my underwear, socks, t-shirts, shorts, and other rollable things. I just roll up all my clothes and you can fit a ton in these two spaces. Moving farther back, another hanging wardrobe. I've just got basically all my hanging shirts, flannels, stuff like that. Below that is some ski boots and other miscellaneous gear. And then above you can see some of my shoes. I have that on both sides. And then each side has a couple outlets and uh, USB plugs. In order to use 110 outlets or run the fridge on 110, you basically had to either be plugged in or run the generator that's on board. And I didn't want to do that. So I added an inverter and some other electrical components to the truck camper. So the inverter is in here. And then I actually cut out the front of this cabinet face to help expel some of the heat because that does get pretty warm. It was huge for me to make this more off-grid capable to avoid campgrounds, avoid additional costs of running a generator, having to deal with propane and filling propane all the time. And then above the inverter, I also have just some more storage over here. This is just shelving I use for hats, towels, extra sheets, and my contacts and things like that. And then next to that, I do have my TV, which is on a nice big swivel mount. And then back behind me, there is a fan, nice for getting some air moving in the space and cooling it off, or even as an additional kind of exhaust fan to use as you're cooking and get some more air moving. So now we are sitting in this slide out portion of the truck camper. For me, it was kind of a necessity in my mind to have a truck camper with a slide out. That's why I went with something this big. And the main reason was because of the dogs. I kind of wanted them to not be in my space all the time. Below the dinette table, I keep one of my dog's beds. There's another one on the floor of the kitchen. They had their own dedicated den in my bus, and this is kind of their new den of sorts. And then also under here, I keep their dog food. It's nice not to have to be tripping over them all the time. They can be in the bed, they can be under here, they have some floor space. So having the slide out really creates a ton more space in here. This is a four person dinette, but it also drops into another bed. So I can have guests here. Here you'll see I have my Starlink. I used to just operate off of a hotspot. The hotspot relied on cell service, but it was just a little tiny hotspot that I could charge and then it would just operate on its own without being plugged in. The Starlink draws power constantly anytime it's plugged in, but the huge bonus is you don't need cell service. You know, this is going to work pretty much anywhere for you. The connectedness that it gives me and the ability to work really anywhere and not have to worry about does the spot I'm going to have cell service, it's awesome. So then also underneath the bench, there's some storage. So this I use for treats, some of the other dog stuff. It's also accessible from the outside. So the dinette couches are kind of split in half, half of it accessible from the outside, half accessible from the inside. You also see 
one of these suction cup hooks here. Hooks are awesome for jackets or whatever else you need to hang. Easy way to just kind of get some more storage going. All the windows in the truck camper have blinds that you can pull down and stop at any point. And then all the windows have screens. And then I have also over here a nice screen door, which is awesome and just kind of makes the inside feel like the outside a little bit more. And welcome to my bathroom. So this is what's considered a wet bath. You know, everything in here can get wet. Uh, it's the shower, it's the toilet, it's the sink. I originally was looking at truck campers with dry baths, but I kind of like that I went with the wet bath. Honestly, it makes it super easy to clean um, because it can all get wet and you can just hose it all down if you need to. Again, the hooks, you'll see the squeegee, the towel, and then this little basket is also on some of those kind of suction hooks. In my bus, I had a composting toilet that I made myself um, and then a urine diverter that diverted down into a gray tank. Now I have an actual flushing toilet and I always told myself I would never want to deal with a black tank, it's gross, whatever. And honestly, I prefer dealing with this than I did with the composting toilet. It's super easy, it's just like a normal toilet. You hook up the line and pull the valve and that's it. You know, I don't even really get much smell when I dump my tanks. Obviously, there's some water usage associated with this because you are flushing, so it takes a little bit more of your water. And I have 59 gallons plus the six gallons of the uh, hot water heater, but I can still last, you know, a week or two with that amount of water, uh, depending on how much I'm showering and things in here. So I could probably stretch it even farther than that if I wasn't showering at all. But to me, I'm moving enough that, you know, finding a place to dump or fill really isn't that big of an issue. For the shower, it actually operates off of the sink. So you have this little head over here. Plenty of space to take a shower. I never feel too cramped. And an easy way to operate it as well, you basically just pull the knob up and then it'll switch to the shower. And it has a switch on and off so you can set the temperature and then just click it on and off as you need to rinse and whatever. And it works really well, I enjoy it. So I initially was intrigued in this lifestyle and got started with living on the road because all the things I wanted to do, hiking, skiing, mountain biking, you know, all these things that require my body to be very physically fit. Maybe when I'm 60 or 65, whenever I retire, my body's not gonna be able to do that. But I didn't wanna take the chance that I would get to that point and look back and regret that I never did it. If I do it now, I'm never gonna regret that I didn't do it. And I absolutely would never look back. Like this is the best decision I've ever made in my life. It's taught me so much about myself. You get put in tough situations, you get challenged, things break, you have breakdowns or whatever it may be. You go through a lot on the road and you have to process a lot of it by yourself. It's taught me really how to just take anything head on and embrace the challenge and know you're gonna figure it out. At the end of the day, it really empowers you. It gives you a lot of confidence knowing you're doing it and you're living the lifestyle that you wanted to and that you sought out to do or that you at one point dreamt of. So here we are on the outside of the truck. A lot of these truck campers you'll see people put on normal pickup trucks with just a normal pickup bed. For me, because I wanted to optimize storage and everything, I wanted to pick up with a flatbed. So I went with a Ford F450 and this is actually a cabin chassis model. So the wheelbase is even longer than the longest long bed pickup truck you can get. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to be able to create a space in front of the truck to be able to put my bike and any other gear that I needed. I've got close to three feet of space here so I could fit another one or two bikes if I really wanted. My bike is protected from the elements, but also it's locked in here. So this is actually an 11 and a half foot flatbed, but then I added these storage boxes that fit the space perfectly and give me ability to carry tools, fuel, leveling blocks, my skis, all sorts of stuff in here. So I have way, way more storage than I ever would have had if I just put this on a normal pickup. Now, the reason I had to go with a Ford F450 is just because of the sheer weight. With this truck, which is a 16,500 pound weight rating, I am right at that number, fully loaded with everything. All that really holds the camper onto the truck are these tie downs. And these are actually spring loaded. That way, if you hit bumps and things, it doesn't just tear these tie downs out of the truck. I wanted to still be able to separate my home from my vehicle. That was something I had with my bus build. And I effectively have the same thing here. So in addition to the storage boxes that I had, there is some storage that there already is in the camper. Um, this is one of the examples of what's under the dinette seat. So in here I have my hoses, 
you know, my short power cord, some other stuff. And all of these obviously lock as well. On the back here, I do have an awning that comes all the way out, which is really nice for providing some shade. Here we have my tank kind of dumping station, so to speak. Uh, both gray and black tank just hook up here. Super easy, super clean way to dump. Here's my two propane tanks. Like I said, two 30 pound tanks, so it's a lot of propane. Here's the battery compartment. I have a single 206 amp hour SOK battery. It's a lithium iron phosphate. I have a DC to DC charger, an upgraded charge controller, and a Lynx distributor back here. With my charge controller and some of those components, I didn't actually add any physical panels to the top of my rig. Because I have the DC to DC charger, anytime the camper is on and the truck is running, I can charge through that. So I actually only have a portable solar panel. Above my battery box, I have a little outdoor shower. And then here's my hot water heater and my water fill. That's about it as far as other accessible things on the outside of the camper. Thank you guys for coming and checking out the truck camper. Uh, if you guys wanna follow along on the adventures and what we have planned here, uh, you can follow me at Johnny Moves on Instagram. And if you wanna go check out my bus build, I have it all documented there on YouTube. And you can go check out the tiny home tours of my bus build. So thanks again for coming and we'll see you later.